Mic check one, two. Are we recording? <laughs> yeah, we recording. You know what? Regular mic, we back. We gonna finish strong. Check this out, y'all already know what this is, man. Y'all know what this is, you know who I am. We here. And if you don't know, mic check one, two, regular Mike, a.k.a. El Snacko, a.k.a. Young Trail Mix. And you here, we here. Episode four, Snack History Month with El Snacko. This is the finale. This is the final episode. You know what I'm saying? So before we even start, I want to thank everybody who watched, liked, shared, commented, Everybody who hit me up, you know what I mean, who enjoyed the content, I appreciate all y'all, you know what I mean? We're going to get that out the way early because that's most important, the appreciation. I really enjoy doing it and I really enjoy that y'all enjoy, you know, taking in the content. Pause. Um, so we here though, we here for the last episode, the last installment, Snack History, Black History. You know what I'm saying? And um, this is what we're going to do today. This is the last day of Black History Month, right? February. But we all know March. March is Women's History Month, right? So that's where I'm going to take y'all today. I'm going to try to bridge the two. You know what I'm saying? Also in March is the, uh, the anniversary of the virus. You know, for us New Yorkers, you know, that's when they really shut shit down. You know, March 2020. So, you know, what happened, once everybody got shut down, we all learned new things. You know, we picked up new, um, we picked up new hobbies and such. And one of the more popular hobbies that people picked up was cooking, cooking for themselves. You know, we couldn't go to restaurants. We couldn't, you know, eat out as much as we wanted to because things was closed. So, you know, people picked up cooking. For the most part, where did y'all get y'all, y'all cooking recipes from? Yeah, 2020, right? We got our cooking recipes from the internet. But that wasn't always how it was. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, people had to get their recipes from a cookbook. You know, you had to pick up the cookbook. You had to go through it, read it, measure and all that. You know, it was a little more difficult. But check this out. Today, I'm going to tell you about the first cookbook written by not only a African-American, but an African-American woman. Look at that. Look at how we bridge the gaps here. African-American and a woman. So check this out. This lady's name was Melinda Russell. Okay. Now, this cookbook was published in the year 1866. I had trouble finding pictures of this woman, man. So I don't, you know, I usually throw a little picture on there for y'all or whatever, but I couldn't find no pictures. Couldn't find no, she kept it low. You know what I'm saying? She ain't really do it. For the fame. She did it for the culture. <laughs> but Melinda Russell is the lady's name. The first African-American woman to have a cookbook published. And the name of this cookbook was... I got to read it because I don't want to mess it up. Domestic Cookbook. Containing a careful selection of useful receipts for the kitchen. That's the name of the book by Melinda Russell. Now this book... Listen, I, I did my research on Melinda Russell. Not only was she a cook, but she was, but she was also a pastry chef. This is, you know, what this is man. This is Snack History Month with El Snacko. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna find a cook that was a, a pastry chef, a dessert cook. So in this cookbook, I went right to the desserts. I had to see how she was moving with the desserts. You know what I'm saying? You know what? From what I saw, there's a gang of desserts in here. She had recipes for cakes, muffins, cookies. I can't even... I'm going to show y'all a page. I can't even really get into all of the recipes in, in specific. You know what I'm saying? Cakes, cookies, muffins, pies. You know what I'm saying? Also, this cookbook was also different. Like, I show y'all the page, right? So, as you can see, the recipes are very short. Because she wrote this cookbook, she wrote these recipes for people who already, you know, knew how to cook a little bit. So Melinda Russell was born a free woman. Now, this is back in the 1800s. You know, slavery was still going on. Uh, she was born a free woman in Tennessee. Now, when she did this cookbook, 
she did it with the notion of, you know, I'm going to show y'all that Southern cooking isn't always, you know, poverty, poverty, you know, what's the word? Southern cooking isn't always based around poverty, you know what I mean? Because, you know, cooking in the South, slaves, you know, they made a lot of dishes that could feed a big group of people. And, you know, African-American women wasn't weren't really looked upon as skilled cooks. But Melinda Russell showing y'all what time it is with this cookbook. Skilled. Skilled. This is skilled recipes. You know what I'm saying? So she had things in there, you know, besides desserts. She had other dishes in there, you know, entrees and whatnot. But what I found interesting was it wasn't just food recipes in there. She also had recipes in there, uh, remedies for toothaches. She had remedies for to cure, you know, to help you deal with like skin burns and, you know, things, you know, she had weird things in there. Not even weird, but just odd. Like I saw I saw something in there. She had a recipe to help you restore your original hair color. Now, <laughs> y'all know how y'all know how, you know, good hair, a good hair recipe is fire in the cookbook. She also had a recipe. Some of y'all need to adhere to is how to cure corns because some of y'all running around with these shoes that are too small you know what i mean holla at melinda russell she got the recipe to cure corns you got to soak your feet we're not gonna get into that so yeah so you know what i mean i just wanted to share some light on the first african-american woman to have a cookbook published melinda russell salute to her you know what i mean also salute to all of the black chefs coming up in the world you know what i mean um it's a lot of black chefs you see a lot of black chefs on tv a lot of restaurants open, black-owned restaurants from black chefs. Black chefs are coming up. Black chefs are definitely coming up, man. That's all I really got for y'all today. You know what I mean? Like I said, thank y'all for, for, for rocking with me. Snack History Month with El Snacko. Four episodes. If you haven't seen them, go back and watch them. Also, before I go, I got two good friends that's doing their thing in the chef in, in the chef field. You know what I mean? Y'all know Sheena, Chef Sheena. You know, y'all can follow her on Instagram, at Cello Cuisine. Y'all seen her on here. She the vegan chef. She doing her thing. Shout out to her. And I also want to give a shout out to my bro, man, Chef Jamil. Me and Jamil go way back to kids. You know what I'm saying? Chef Jamil, a.k.a. Mr. Takeout. I want to give a shout out to him, man. He doing his thing on the chef side of things, too. You know what I mean? He do his little plates. On a daily, he posts a menu on a daily. Follow him on Instagram at Mr. Takeout NYC. If you local, he cooking every day. Holla at him, man. He got, he got dishes. Who ain't got no dishes? He got dishes. He got desserts. Follow him, man. He cooking on the daily. You know what I mean? So I want to give a shout out to him. Shout out Jamil. Shout out Sheena. Shout out you for watching. And um, you know what I mean? Y'all stick with me. I got some more stuff coming. You know what I mean? Snack History Month. Black History Month. I mean, listen, Snack History and Black History goes past a month. So y'all stick with me, man. I'm going to keep this rocking. And I'm going to leave y'all to it, man. I got some cookies I'm going to get to. Cheers.